Well, hey guys, I'm Ali. Let's talk about the Yulan. Uh, so earlier this week, I posted up the video about uh, checking out the Yulan Festival or the Hungry Ghost Festival celebrations that have happened here in Hong Kong uh, in the past two weeks, I think it's been. <laughs> uh, so before I get into talking about what was in the actual video and some of the um, images associated with the Yulan, I should really explain what the Yulan Festival was. Um, as I said, the English name given to it is the Hungry Ghost Festival and it's essentially Asia's equivalent to Halloween. Um, and it's found all over Asia. There's different names for it. In Japan, it's um, Chugen, Chugen and Oban. There's two separate, it's kind of separate into two separate events. Um, but across Asia, it's all developed into different, different celebrations. They've all changed and localized. Like in Japan, it's not so much about general spirits as uh, either your, f as paying homage to your family spirits, your family ancestors and um, ensuring that they're happy wherever they are. Um, whereas here in Hong Kong, it's general spirit world um, offerings, blessings. Um, it's, so essentially what it's about is during the seventh lunar month, they believe that, and when I say they, I mean uh, it's a Buddhist and Taoist um, belief. Here in Hong Kong, I don't know exactly what the demographics are in terms of uh, religion and beliefs, uh, but it seems to be fairly common, uh, at least in my area. Um, so yes, during the seventh month, the veil between our realm and the spirit realm is thinned, and that means that spirits can quite easily come into our, um, our realm. And during this time, there's a, a lot of superstitions around such as you shouldn't leave clothing outside um, because the spirits can get into your clothing and then when you put them on the spirit gets into your body and then you have bad luck and you know you're possessed um, uh, there's a lot of things um, that happen in the community during this time uh, you're not supposed to go out at night you're not supposed to go to your friend's house because spirits can follow you and then the spirits get into your friend's houses um, lots of things like that. Uh, it's actually really interesting to see how these play out amongst uh, different generations especially. So there's several events that happened over the week in different areas. Um, the first one that you saw in the video was one that was, I think it was either organised by the tourism board or by the local government or state government. Um, it wasn't so much the actual festival celebration as more like a, a community event. And it was mainly it was aimed at either, you know, just bringing the community together to do little things like they were, um, they had um, uh, talks and presentations done about Yulan and uh, about various things that go on in Hong Kong uh, culture wise. Um, I didn't film any of them and we didn't stay for any of them because they were all done in Cantonese, which. Mm. <laughs> It kind of limited the scope a little bit. Um, and they had things that the local uh, families could enter into like a shrine building competition. Uh, again, that was all in Cantonese and I couldn't really get in, in amongst that so I didn't film a lot of that. Um, and as you can probably see in the video, a lot of the tents and such were empty. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure why, that was the second day of the um, event. Uh, there was a typhoon kind of looming nearby Hong Kong that weekend, hence the wind. Um, but it wasn't cancelled, it wasn't, you know, the typhoon coming wasn't a uh, very uh, high ranking, ranking the right word, um, typhoon, it wasn't going to be very strong, it wasn't going to bring a great deal of rain and wind. Um, but there just didn't seem to be a lot on offer at that first event and a lot of the tents that were taken up it was one stall just spread over the three uh, tents so um, there wasn't a whole heap on offer there and a lot of the stuff that was on offer was in Cantonese only um, uh, which is probably the reason why I should learn Cantonese while I live here. Um, 
But we did see some really cool things. Um, we saw, uh, first of all, they had a traditional Chinese tea ceremony kind of stall, which is in the video. Um, they also had various hot food on offer, um, vegetarian and vegan tofu products. And there was an arts and craft area that was unfortunately only for little kids. Um, <laughs> so we didn't join in on that. Um, you'd see in the video there was two stages. Uh, one stage uh, was holding the family shrining, family shrine building competition. The other stage was empty. And the reason it was empty was because that was where they were doing. Um, I think during the evening that would be, that was where the monks were going to be chanting and stuff. Um, as I said, there was a typhoon coming, so we didn't hang around till the evening. We kind of got home as soon as the rain started coming in. Um, but all in all, it was interesting to see, but it was a little bit disappointing in terms of what was on offer. One thing um, that event did have is that it had a little display about um, the characteristics of the Yulan. Um, there was a few images, there was a little cartoon comic strip style board explaining the origins of the Yulan. Um, I had a look online and there's a lot of debate what the actual origins of this belief are. Um, some of it has to do with uh, there's a little boy who wanted to save his mother who his mother ended up in the spirit realm and he wanted to save her um, so he tried bribing Buddha I think or uh, it's a really confusing story and um, I was reading simplified versions of it because it's just such a really long confusing old story I was reading simplified translations of the story and it got really confusing anyway um, so the boy was able to save his mother but then he got trapped there and somehow that became the modern day version uh, there's various stories of similar vein that try to explain why they celebrate this um, I have a feeling it's similar to Halloween where you know, there's different kinds of understandings why we dress up in monster costumes and you know walk along the streets asking for lollies and candies and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it's very similar to Halloween in that, in that um, perspective. But yes, they did have a lot of information at the event about the characteristics of the festival, um, as well as uh, there's a bit of a history on it as well. There are. There were four main characteristics at the event um, that they highlighted as key parts of the Yulan festival. So, inviting the deities involves a procession of monks through the community collecting incense burners that they then bring to where the festival main grounds will be. Um, and there's a bit of a ceremony to invite the deities and spirits that are flying or that are you know around the area um, to come and collect blessings from the community and offerings um, in hopes of pleasing them, I guess. Uh, the second one is the Ghost King Dashu, who symbolises longevity and transmutation. Uh, he has a divine power to release all the spirits from purgatory. Um, I'm not quite sure what that means. He looks kind of uh, scary and intimidating, but the impression I got was that He's not a bad deity, um, but it sounds yeah. I'm a little bit. I am a little bit confused about him if he's good or not. Um, but part of this festival is off is giving uh, him offerings and trying to get his blessing. Uh, I imagine it so he can either fairy your fam the spirits from purgatory to the resting place or so that he doesn't release them on the earth. The third one is the sacred horse. Um, his purpose is to transit the golden chart and the will of the deity. Um, he's also often pictured chewing on long grass uh, because it's supposed to symbolize again longevity and vitality. The fourth one is the sacred robe. 
Um, this is huge. It is absolutely giant, as I imagine it's supposed to fit the daisy. Um, it's made out of Shanto paper craft. Um, and it has five golden dragons around the top and then images of mortals and humans are around the bottom. Um, in the second half of the video when we went to the more local organised community based festival um, they had several of these set up as well as matching I think their hats next, next to them um, and they were all slightly different designs but the similar idea of the dragon at the top and people at the bottom and yeah you can see the size of them they're huge very impressive and they're made out of paper that's I'm not quite sure exactly what the Chanteau paper craft is and like what the difference is uh, in that in that craft um, but it was amazing work regardless so it was awesome right. like I said the second half of the video is a more community organized locally organized uh, festival uh, when you first walk in through the paper arch um, to the right there's a, an open space that's just all tables and it's just family sitting around sharing meals um, Turtle and I didn't join this because we weren't really sure how it worked uh, we went we didn't bring any food ourselves and we weren't sure how the food actually um, you know was shared amongst people um, how we paid for it even if we paid for it like we just weren't quite sure and we, we were kind of happy to just uh, observe as opposed to participating in it um, and as you walk through, uh, to the left you can see there's the uh, Chinese opera stage, which I did stay and film a little bit of the opera. It went for a really long time. We were there for, uh, I think maybe two hours and they're only up to the fourth chapter. And it was, I'm not sure what language the actual performance was in. It had Cantonese subtitles to the sides on the screen. Turtle couldn't understand any of it, so I'm hesitant to think that it was in Mandarin. Um, and obviously we don't speak Cantonese, so we couldn't really read the subtitles. We could work out some of what was happening um, uh, from some of the characters. It was something about the the first girl that comes out, uh, she's the daughter and she falls in love with the, the one in... the girl playing a guy in pink. Um, and they want to get married, but her mum, the one who was laughing, uh, doesn't want her daughter to marry that guy because marriage is about power. That mum then went and started poisoning everyone <laughs> with tea, uh, including her servants. Uh, we're not, I'm not sure why, if she was trying to secure her daughter a stronger marriage by doing that. Um, it got really confusing and we were getting very hungry so we, we left it at that um, but it was really interesting to see it's my first time seeing the Chinese opera um, live uh, it was really cool really interesting uh, towards the back of the festival grounds to the left side was um, the horse and dasher um, and there was also a space set up for where the monks were chanting t um, which is at the end of the video um, I don't, I don't quite understand why they had the Chinese opera performance as part of the festival. Uh, it seems like it's a really common thing, but the part I didn't understand was that the opera was happening at the same time as the monks chanting, and they were kind of like overlapping each other. Um, and I just didn't, I've, I've asked a lot of people and no one can really give me an answer why they have both of them together at the same time. I kind of feel like you'd usually expect that the more religious part would be the dominant part or at least be given its own time to like be worshipped um so i'm not entirely sure oh the sun came out <laughs> uh, i'm not entirely sure why um they happen at the same time i don't know if you can hear in the video they're they're actually happening at this they you can hear the monks chanting at the same time as the opera um so yeah, and then there's a the big, um, there's big kind of dragon looking pillars in the middle. That's the incense that they've got burning. And in front of every incense spot is a big table covered in food. The food is full of deities. Um, so that's all the Yulan stuff. There's one part I didn't put in the video, um, mainly because I couldn't um, actually film any of it. Uh, so privately, people 
um, have all along the street you see little shrines outside people's buildings, both shops and houses. Um, and during uh, the more religious steeped festivals like the Yulan, uh, you see the shrines have little candles burning in them and incense. Um, and people oft also often during that week, during the two week period of Yulan, um, they would be outside their shops or their houses or kind of in the off streets, like the back streets, um, burning paper money and paper blessings in these big drums. Uh, I asked them if they'd mind me filming them and they all said no. And the reason I said no is because uh, it's believed with some of the spirits are inside the fire and if you film them, then the spirits will come haunt you through your photos and your filming. Um, so it's their superstition. I totally understand. I was ha I was all right not filming it. Um, I did sneak. <laughs> I was I, this was before I found out about the superstition behind it. I did actually uh, kind of ninja ninja film uh, a guy's little shrine outside of his shop, um, and he didn't seem very happy with it. And I I apologized and yeah. Um, so I didn't film that part of it, but uh, that is to be part of it. Um, yeah, so that's Yulan. <laughs> I, I'm still a little bit confused about things, and I've been talking to various friends, but uh, it, it runs from different regions, and each region has slightly different versions and practices. Um, so yeah, I can't give that much information. Even looking online, there's a lot of things that contradict and don't quite match up and the things that they say online is very normal and then I didn't see it uh, in the two events that I went to. Um, but that's Yulan, that's Asia's answer to Halloween. <laughs> Check out the video um, and let me know what you think of it. It was a really cool event, I will definitely go back next year and try and learn more if I can. Uh, but for now, that's all from me. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great day. Oh, yeah.